Chinese, like every language, has got grammar, no matter what people say. A language without grammar is a language without rules, also known as stammering. <laughs> However, there are many basics that are, in my opinion, not even worth talking about because there are not really grammar points. If you go through a Chinese grammar wiki or basic textbooks, you will see so many minor points explained in detail, but it's just like vocabulary. Often it's just stated how single words function. This is not what I'm going to talk about today because it's so obvious. You just see it a few times in context and it gets all clear. For instance, the word bier is used to express don't, don't do something. Bier dancing or bier xiang tai duo don't think too much. This is not really grammar, this is just a pattern, a vocabulary. Or even some more advanced stuff like that the word zama, which usually means how. For example, 你现在怎么学习中文? How do you study Chinese right now? Can also mean what in a different context, but it's not really complex grammar or anything. Anyway, let's dive straight into the most important point to understand the logic of Chinese sentences. I call it the d description structure. <laughs> it's not an official name, it's just how I call it. In English, if you want to add a description to something, you usually mostly create a whole new sentence that you add straight after. So for instance, we would say, this is the phone, now comes the description, that I bought last week. And it's the same in German, same structure. Das ist das Handy, das ich letzte Woche gekauft habe. Create a whole new sentence, which I separate with that comma. Now, in Chinese, the special thing is that this whole description comes before the word that is being described. So, the last bit, the last part of the sentence that I bought last week, comes before the phone. So, in Chinese, it would be 这是我上星期买的手机 这是, this is 手机, the phone. This is the phone. Now, what do I say about that phone? Here's the description. 我上星期 my I last week bought. So literally, this is the I last week bought phone. <laughs> and the descriptive part is always connected to the word or to the subject that is being described closer with that d particle. You probably know already that it's the possession particle. For instance, you can say, 谢谢你的时间. Thank you for your time, 你的时间. But in fact, this de is mostly dropped in speech. So don't say 我的朋友, 我的老板. Just say 我朋友, 我老板. And it will make you sound so much more natural. Now, this usage is also possession, if you will so. Because one word possesses a description, no matter how long that description is. Now, if you understand this, then trust me, you already understand a lot because it is being used in almost every sentence. Just remember that the descriptive part always comes before the word subject it describes. So here are some examples from Chinese people themselves. Let's take a look at that sentence and separate the subject, the verb, and the object first. So, 口语 is a subject, spoken language, 也是, is also, so this is basically the verb. Spoken language is 什么什么, something in between, 中文, Chinese. So, somebody wants to say, spoken language is also the Chinese, now would come a description, that, blah blah blah. And the description is that long part in the middle. So, literally word by word, everyone in books study. So, spoken language is also the Chinese that everybody learns in books. Second example with a small specialty. The third. We just keep reading. Uh, the third I want to say is. And many. Fellow students. Uh, also say or again say. So now the context is not really important. But what is important to recognize that after the there is not really a noun or a subject that is being described. It's just the sanger, the third was young shuode, I wanna say is. Well this is because often the noun or the subject that's being described more closely is just being dropped. So now you can just imagine that between the de and the sh is the word dong si, which just means thing. So then it would be uh, was young shuode dong si shi. 
the thing that I want to say. Now, a bit of a more difficult example, but you have to see it. It's very eye-catching that we have two d in this sentence. But let's go through it step by step and translate it literally. 好了, just means okay. 这就是, this is, let's look for what is meant. Let's go to the end of the sentence. 内容, content. So what we have now is, this is the content. And the content is being described with that long part of the sentence, which makes up the biggest part of the sentence. Now let's just translate it literally. 这就是, this is, 今天, today. 我想, I want, 给大家, with everyone, to everyone, 分享, share, 的, and now comes the first thing that is being described, 所有, which literally just means all or everything, and we just keep reading, it doesn't make sense yet, but 内容, content, so it doesn't make really sense, but let's just translate it literally, this is all that I wanted to share with you, the content, so basically in English, this is the content, or this is all the content that I wanted to share with you today. Yes, if you want to learn Chinese, you have to prepare your brain for this kind of structure, which is very uncommon for uh, English learners or for Germans like me. Now, when talking about the D structure, we might just cover the other two D particles, which at first were also very confusing to me. But trust me, you will get the hang of it with enough input. All right, let's talk about the D structures. This character here has got three different pronunciations and thereby three different meanings. The first one is day, which colloquially means something like must or have to. Okay. Then it can also be pronounced as de in the word de dao, which means to get or to obtain. All right. But above all functions, it is a verb complement. And besides the de description structure, I would say that the verb complement structure is most important too, because it is being used in almost every second sentence. Now, it is used to express how a verb happened, how a verb verbs, what is the outcome, the result of a verb. For example, something I say very often to my Chinese friends is 你说的, 你说, you speak. Now, how do you speak? De, that's a connective glue to the complement, to the result. 你说的, 太快了, too fast. Or you can also say 你说的对, you speak Doi, correct, correctly, so you're right. Now, if you want to negate the result, you can just use bu instead of de. So now, instead of saying, um, I totally understand what you say, you can just make, uh, I don't understand at all what you're saying. <laughs> now, often we also see sentences like this, talking about an event in the past here in this context. Technically, we should have d in between chi and wan, but we have the result straight added after the verb. Chi wan, wan means to finish. So I finished eating. Often it's also used in the word zhao, to look for something, to seek. For example, wo zhao bu dao, wo de shou ji lao. I couldn't find my phone. Zhao just means to look for, but bu dao adds that information of I was seeking, but without success, so I couldn't find it. But if I would say, watch out, down, I found. It's also often used in the word can. Can just means to see. But can jian is like to see successfully, or can dao, to, to see and actually recognize or understand. So often when I start a video call with my Chinese friends, I ask right at the beginning, ni nang kan dao wo ma? Uh, can you see me? Like, do you see the picture of me successfully? Now you can also add as much information as you want after the verb. For example, you want to say, you sing well. That would be just, 你唱得好, 你唱, you see, 的好, good. But now with this structure, you could also say, you sing better than yesterday. So, 你唱得比昨天更好, a helpful mnemonic for you, which I made up to remember, this kind of de is being used after verbs and not these other two dis. This <laughs> is that the radical on the left looks like a slide to me. I don't know why, but like these typical slides you see at Maccas. And <laughs> just imagine the action of somebody sliding through that slide. So to slide is a verb. <laughs> it is an action, it is an active action. So if you see this de with this slide, just remember it has to do with verbs. It's always used after the verb. Not so the other d. And we get through it by saying that this d structure with the verb complement is kind of interchangeable with the d 
particle which is used with adjectives. So for example, I could say 请说的慢一点 请说, please speak the connective for the verb complement 慢一点, a little bit slower but I could also say 请慢慢地说 now what happened? 慢慢地 slowly speak so please speak slowly is basically the same as the verb complement please speak slower and that's basically all about that third d it is used to form adverbs so basically it also tells you how a verb verbs so the structure is adjective plus this kind of d plus verb just learn this sentence here by heart i seriously earnestly study chinese how do you study earnestly and for the verb complement just remember this sentence by heart with this kind of de and then you can hopefully distinguish these two another example 我希望能跟中国人自信地说话. i wish i can speak with chinese people confidently how do i wish to speak 自信地, confidently so it is an adverb fun fact chinese people even often use the wrong de in the written language and I like to tease them by pointing out their mistakes. <laughs> Next, let's talk about the ba structure, which is feared all over the world. We know that Chinese generally follows the subject verb object structure, but ba seems to break the structure and shifts uh? the object to the beginning of the sentence to emphasize something. It's like instead of saying, I cleaned up my room, my room I cleaned up. Sounds a bit weird, like Shakespeare stuff or something. <laughs> so I just shifted the object. What did I clean up? The room to the beginning. It could be used in the context of, let's say your mom tells you, when did you ever clean up anything yourself? And then you want to emphasize my room. You say, my room I cleaned up myself. It still sounds a bit weird, but in Chinese this is actually used um, pretty often. How it helps me to remember, just imagine that the ba means to take. So I took my room and cleaned it up. Another example. I, this book, give to you. But you could say, I take this book and give it to you. Next, let's talk about the word be, which indicates the passive voice. Just use be before a verb to express that a subject is receiving an action rather than performing it. I have also noticed that this is being used often in the past tense. For example, something was stolen. My phone was stolen. Has this problem been solved? Passive. It's not like saying did you solve that problem? Now let's also quickly talk about particles, which make up the big part of Chinese sentences, but it's very difficult to break it down for you because you just need to see tons of examples to get the right feeling for these particles when it's appropriate to use them. So here just quickly, look, this is the particle which indicates a change of state. It can mean past tense like what I ate, but it can also just say that something that has not been switch to something that is now. So for example, I could say 你变了, you have changed. So obviously there is a difference between how have you been before and how are you now. But it's not necessarily past tense. I could also say 我有头疼了, I have a headache, which means a couple minutes ago I did not have a headache, now I have. Moreover, you should know that it's used a lot in fixed structures. For example, with the word 已经 already. So you would say, 我已经学习中文一年了. I already studied Chinese for a year. Or it's also used with 岁 to indicate someone's age. Ma is a question particle which is simply added at the end of a sentence, at the end of a statement to turn it into a question. For example, 你喜欢看电影? You like to watch movies. Okay, that's a statement. But if you just add ma, 你喜欢看电影吗? Then it just means, do you like watching movies? Ba is used for suggestions, but it can also be a polite request, like a polite imperative. Let's get started, let's start. It can also sound like an unsure tone. It's like, this matter, this thing is very obvious, right? It has that kind of right, if you're a bit uncertain. Na is also a question particle, but it has a bit more curiosity. hao, I'm fine. Nina, what about you? And you? Shanghai na, the weather here is good. 
what about Shanghai? I also noticed that it's often used in the middle of a sentence and it's really just like a... Uh, <laughs> for example, I say these things... Uh, blah blah blah. This things are they shama are shama. Ah is used for so much. Emphasis, excitement. It can also be agreement, or if you seek confirmation. The other ma is used to express something obvious. It's like we all know it. It can also be used to soften imperatives, so you see they somehow overlap with each other because ba also has got that function. Ya is similar to a. It just depends on the ending of the word which is used before it. So it's often used for surprise or it also has like a playful tone. Sesenia. <laughs> la is a fusion of a and la. And it is used to indicate that something is completed or accomplished. How la gongzuo do zuo wan la. Now next let me tell you this. In Chinese there are many fixed structures which don't really follow the pattern of subject verb object. And all I can say is learn these structures by heart. Write them down. It's also called sentence mining. If you know these structures by heart, make use of them because you have them in your brain, but you just transform them into other sentences. If they are not too colloquial, they can even be found in the Pleco app. So Pleco often even explains these sentence structures and gives you a hand of examples. Just to name a few, the shuho is used to express when doing something. When studying Chinese, blah blah blah. Song from Dao until from morning to evening I was working or something. Another good structure I love to use is Yi Tian Ye Bu. And it just means not even a little. So for example, Yo Shuho wa Yi Jiar Ye Ting Bu Dong. Sometimes I don't understand at all, not even a little bit. You have heaps of them. So remember to write them down and look up some examples. Lastly, let's quickly talk about measure words. Measure words are used to quantify nouns. You have to put a measure word between a number and the noun that is being counted. In English, you just say two apples. Number, noun. But in Chinese, you have to say liang ge ping guo. Ge is a measure word. It's like in English, a loaf of bread or a pair of shoes. You don't just say a bread or a shoes. <laughs> Here's a list of the most important ones. G is used for most things that don't really fall in any of the below categories. Chiao is used for long and narrow objects like rivers, streets, pants. Zin is used for articles of clothing. But also other stuff like which means matter. Whereas I have to say I noticed people don't strictly say I even noticed Chinese people sometimes say 一个事情 One of my Chinese friends explained it's okay in that case but if you use 个 for other words where you obviously use another measure word then it would make you sound very stupid 只 is used for animals like pets but not all animals, it's not universal Horses for example have another measure word 本 is used for books 这本书 只 which literally means like branch is for long and thin inflexible objects <laughs> it's so so weird so complicated but such as an arrow or a cigarette but it also has some very different categories it's used for troops and sport teams Zhang is used for flat objects like a table paper a bed bay is used for glasses no I don't drink coffee well <laughs> uh, eBay cafe just remember the phrase gan bay Cheers in Chinese and bay is always related to glasses, a cup of. Wan is used for bowls, for example, a bowl of rice. Fen is commonly used for portions of food, like a serving, but it can also have like different categories. Many measure words have different directions where they usually belong to. Can you can be used for documents or for tasks, but I mostly see it related to food. Yi fen mian tiao, like a portion of noodles but you can't say a portion of rice because rice usually comes in a bowl so it's yi wan mi fan it's a bowl of rice what if you put rice on a flat plate <laughs> never mind shuang is used for things that usually come as a pair like chopsticks or a pair of shoes liang is used for vehicles if you're not sure what measure word to use for one word then just look it up on pleco and at the bottom you see 
which stands for measure word. For example, if I look up ti zhe ka, then I see that measure word liang. By no means I covered everything that can be said. There's still so many complicated structures which I also don't understand yet. Most importantly, don't make yourself crazy when studying a language. Don't beat yourself up if you don't understand something at first. Language learning should never be stressful. If you don't understand something, just leave it for now and continue getting input in that language. At its right time, it will just click automatically, I promise. So just chill. <laughs> Alright, I hope that helps and I'll catch you next time. Bye bye, auf Wiedersehen, das Vidania, tschüss, Wally, zeit sehen.